Welcome, Bibliolauts. Welcome. I am Griggs and many other things. And today, another installment of the book never written tag. I have bought a notepad, which is going to be dedicated only to that. Because I did the tag of the book never written, um, a tag, an original tag created by yours truly with um with the intention of making it into a tag everyone would make a video and that's it but then i realized through through the video that i have more than a hundred uh, books that i could uh, that have never been written the way i would like them to be written and that i can pretty much talk about for hours as if they already existed because they are so needed on my library and since I am a writer and I am also a very creative person and a really bad drawer and I need to improve that, I was like, why not create a series of videos? Like, just like the book Self Essentials, this is a, a book Self Essentials yet to be. Um, so this is the second video for me. Someone is already ahead of me. Steve Donoghue has already made two videos, one with 10 books that have never been written and one with um, one, no, no, with five, uh, so that's 15. And I only made one, right? So I could come here and do 30 all at once, but I don't draw that fast. So I'm gonna show you five, five more books that have never been written that are required. They should exist. They should exist. They should be on my library. If they were on my library, they would be essentials and probably for also favorites if they were written uh, in the way that I would like them to be written. Uh, the first book that we have already touched on is The Price You Paid. So I'm I'm just passing through that. The Price You Paid is a study on, on the... Um, there you go, The Price You Paid. I study on the relationship between human progress and this the destruction of natural places. Why civilization is always in tension with nature. Uh, and we skip that and go to the next book. And this book should have been the first one on this uh, list because it's uh, certainly um, it's the list itself, basically. This is the book of the book never written tag. And this is an anthology that we could all gather together in Booktube and do. This is a collection of books that have never been written. I, I called it uh, wanted a selection of seeds and broken dreams. The book never written. Um, wanted a selection of seeds and broken dreams. I I have a, I, but this by this but not by now we should all know what that is. As you see, I am an incredible artist. Uh, um, only comparable to the likes of Goya and Velázquez and Caravaggio. And I am only going to get better page by page. So stay, stay put, stay put for, for the artistic maneuvers that you're about to see. My pictorial acrobacies uh, know no end or measure. Um, I'm not going to say more about this because this book we all know what it is. It's a collection of books that don't, don't exist and should exist. This is a present that we as booktubers could give to the world. Maybe each of us thinks of one to 10 and we make a book together and we edit the book and we publish it. And it's a present to readers and writers of the world to write whenever they run out of ideas. I think we could do that. I think that'd be really cool. If anyone is genuinely, genuinely up for that, let me know, because ideas I have, money I don't, but um, I'm sure I'm sure we can think something out since it's a book to uh, book kind of thing. Because I, I the the beaut the sweet the, the nice thing would be to to make it a collection in which more people put in ideas, so that it's not sort of like narrowed to some to a single person's uh, interests. Although my interests are very wide. Uh, okay, next book. This I had to convert it into a collaborative book because I was telling my idea to my girlfriend and uh, she started putting in so much that the whole idea changed a little bit. It became much more ambitious. And then she just stole it from me. She just said, 
I'm gonna write this book, so shut the fuck up. Don't don't even don't even mention that this is your idea. This is now my idea. She exclaimed it. So I this is a collaborative book now. Because I said it would be nice to have a history of human migrations. And then she was like, you know what? It would be nice to have a history of not only human migrations, but just all the species migrations and how um those migrations relate to each other across the species. And I thought that's so much cooler than human migrations. Um, so that's what this is, a book, of, a, a book about the migrations of creatures, great and small, through space and time, and how they relate to each other. And then here they put a, a paraphrased quote uh, adapted for this book of Borges, which is, if it's, a li- if it's a labyrinth, there is a center, which is to say a structure, an order that gives us hope for understanding, for finding a way out and in. Otherwise, it's infinite. And if it's infinite, it's all chaos and we are lost. So there you go. The Book of Living Patterns. What to say about this book? This is amazing. If you saw this book, you'd pee your pants and take it and run away. The next book, this book, oh my God. This book I might write someday because I think I could. However, I feel like Many iterations of this book that are not this book have been written. I think that a non-academic, more playful version of this book uh, that is still a history and is still a study could be made by your trolley or by maybe someone else, some charitable writer in the Booktooth community. This is called Sacred Other. Sacred Other. And it's a study of the human fascination uh, for the unworldly, but also for, for sacred others. A study about the human fascination of mythical others, the, um, from aliens to God. So putting God and aliens and many other um, superstitions and uh, entities that we've created on the same box and study not so much those things, but w- the human fascination for those things, why create other worlds? Why, why create and elevate creatures that don't exist? Um, there you go. Second so other. Maybe the conclusion would be that because we don't belong here. I don't know. This is a book that could be written by someone else. I'd love to write this book someday myself. And it will be a memoir, partly, partially, and a um, reference book, partially. But um, there's other people who, do, who could write this book as well. I know that there is. And it's a book that easily could go out of date as well. Because um, the means by which we travel and survive are um, changed with time. But this book is inspired by um, Down and Out in London and Paris from George Orwell. I, when I read that book, I, I related to the whole book. Uh, also, when I read travel writing, I tend to relate if it's good travel writing. Although travel writers do go to hell. Um, however, I, here I am ready to, <laughs> to um, sign my demise as well. Because I, I would like to write this book someday. This is called Falling. And it's a hitchhiker's guide to being down and out in the world. And this is not just a travel writing book. It's not just a book of survival and bushcraft. It's not a book just about like surviving in the city with no money. Generally, this is all with no money. If you have money, you don't need to know how to survive. You don't need to know anything. If you have money, you can just like lay down and suck from the breasts of society forever and ever. Um, but this is a part of a series that um, me and my girlfriend thought of writing uh, separately, but sort of like create a multi-volume saga of hitchhikers' guides to certain things, to different things, in an engaging way, but also with a kind of like informative value, and of course, a lot of autobiographical um, stuff in them as well. Um, and here in the synopsis, I wrote really quickly, survive poverty, crime, cold exposure, exploitation, wilderness, humans, and other beasts. Travel across oceans, concrete jungles, deserts, and other labyrinths. 
endure beyond the extreme fatigue, hostility, and solitude. And that's what this is. Fallen, a hitchhiker's down, the guide to being down and out in the world. This book, if this book existed the way I wanted it to exist, it probably would be my favorite book. But it doesn't. It doesn't. A book that does exist in many ways, and none of those ways that I have seen are really good. And that's why I will have to write it myself since many, since very few other people can, is this, this book, Solo, Into the Deep Night. A journey into the darkest, loneliest, the deadliest, and most unworldly places in the world. I am a cave diver. I... I made no secret of the fact that I have been in some of the most deadly places in the planet. I am a cave diver. I am also a diver and a climber and a speleologist. Um, I am also a whitewater kayaker and a surfer. Um, recently, I also became a free diver. So I have access to many different uh, landscapes that would kill you in seconds if you went there with the wrong, um, without the appropriate uh, knowledge and understanding of those places. And I have seen places that defy Im imagination, that go beyond what you could read in literature. I've seen places that would make people become superstitious in a second. Um, some of those places, um, have defied also my own, I have challenged my own capacity to control myself. It's very easy when you see something that feels so supernatural, um, not to panic, but if you panic when you are cave diving, you die immediately. Just by breathing, since you are not breathing air, when it, in, in normal scuba diving, you, you breathe air. But when you are uh, doing technical diving, you tend to be breathing different airs at pressures that tend to be higher. And the result of that is that if you do not control your breath, you could die just by breathing a bit uh, with a bit more intensity than normal, hyperventilating. I always say that diving, just like climbing, are uh, two very safe sports because they're all about preparation. Uh, so long as you prepare and don't forget anything, you will survive <laughs> and you will have a good time and chilling, basically. But you have to religiously remember every single thing that you need to remember. Um, of course, uh, I've sometimes made mistakes and they've made me, they've put me in situations that were not great. Um, and I have way less experience, of course, than many other people that I met when I was living in Quintana Roo, in Yucatan, in near the caves, also in Dominican Republic. But um, I have enough experience and Something that I didn't come across was people that was reading, uh, that was uh, doing these things and that was also writing and reading. Technically people, just like in the surfing world, uh, in the scuba diving world, I've always, uh, like the people that went far enough into those places and was uh, obsessed enough with those practices, tended to be so absorbed by that practice that they knew pretty much nothing else. They could never write a book. They could sometimes never even read a book if it's not related to the subject. So they would not be, in most cases, in the people about, thinking about the people that I have come across, they would not be qualified to do this. Um, for me, cave diving was a... <laughs> I became a cave diver uh, in order to not become homeless because I lost my previous job and I was in Mexico and I didn't even have a working visa. And I fell in love with it. I, I will talk about cave diving some other day on a video specific for that. Actually, I might link in the description. I have a couple of videos of me diving uh, in a different channel, in my Spanish uh, YouTube channel, which I used as an album for a long time. Uh, so I might just link in the description some videos of me cave diving or, or diving. I don't know what they have in there, but maybe some of that will be um, of, um, I mean, good for you to be amused and look at and whatever. So there you go. Um, I would like someone else to write this book, but if no one else will, 
I might have to at some point when I go back to cave diving though because um, this is something that you need to have uh, fresh in your mind to do and to think about and I am not satisfied yet I feel like this is one of the just like reading uh, diving more than any other sport that I have practiced is inexhaustible we are talking about the most the biggest uh, part of the world is water and most of what's happening on the oceans happens under the surface and of all ways and means to explore the bottom, to explore the depths of the ocean, um, diving is the, mo the one that allows you to be the longest and the deepest uh, without being separated from that environment by a machine. So I consider it to be probably the most amazing thing uh, in terms of expeditions and exploration that can be done in this planet, by humans at least. So there you go. This is Solo into the deep night um, a book about specifically uh, solo cave diving, cave diving alone. And I think I skipped one for sure, for sure I skipped one. Because I was talking about diving and I remember surf. How many have, I, have we done? So that's Sacred Other, yeah. Uh, the Book of Living Patterns, Wanted. Ah, that comes after, okay, I didn't do the, 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 the next drawing. But that was five, wasn't it? It was five. One, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So that's it. That's five books that don't exist, that could exist, that I'd love for them to exist, that are amazing, that I could uh, write, and that I would love to read. Uh, so if you can't write any of these, write them. Uh, I'd love to read them. Um, I'm looking forward to, to see what other books can you think of that haven't been written and that you would love for them to be written. You would love to have them in your library. They are very much lacking and they are needed not only in your library, but you consider them to be of some value to other people. Um, of course, uh, this might trigger some people, just like Steve, to make more videos. Steve, don't try to make this a competition because I might not win against you when it comes to reading fast, but if we are gonna make a competition of who can have more ideas about new books, there you might not have as much as an advantage as you might have when it comes to reading. Uh, just saying. So uh, if anyone else in Booktube uh, wants to make uh, more book never written tag ideas, whatever, um, please, bring it on i'd love to I, I mean like this this is probably i mean oh, oh, not because i created it of course not but this is probably my favorite tag uh, and i'm not tagging anyone because this for me is now a series but i'd love it i'd love for it to become a series in some other people's channels as well because oh my god oh my god how many books haven't been written so much more than the ones that have in reality if i think about it so much more than the ones that have because if i can think already of more books I almost can't think of more books that haven't been written than those that I have already read. Um, so, yeah. Have a nice day. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you, Booktube.